welcome to Midnight Slumber. I am your host, Zach Miller. Join me as we take a journey through the alternate realities that take place after midnight. Our story for this episode mixes action and adventure with a little bit of a disaster story. However, there are consequences for living out these types of stories. So, enjoy the story called Officer Write Up. Lights flash by us, creating repeating shadows as we speed down this long and wide tunnel. I am driving in my newly purchased car and my girlfriend in her old black sports car. The lights are a dark fluorescent orange and yellow. As we zip through our old abandoned highway tunnel, it echoes with the lone sound of our roaring engines. These tunnels have been abandoned for decades, ever since they built the new passageway, and now they serve as our own personal raceway. As we speed down the long yet still pristine tunnel, we weave in and out of the massive support pillars that run down the center. These pillars are spaced football fields apart because of their size and strength. Each one is wider and bigger than the Statue of Liberty, and yet we are going so fast that we fly by multiple pillars every second. As we race, my girlfriend starts to pull ahead just a bit when I hear a loud pop. Her car slows down and begins to spin before coming to a stop on the right side of the tunnel in between two pillars. I hit my brakes and turn back around to go where she has stopped. I pull up next to her to make sure she is okay. Nothing on the outside of her car is damaged. I don't see smoke or any leaks either. She rolls her window down and tells me that something is wrong with her car, but she doesn't know what. I ask her if we can switch cars so that I can try and determine what's going on. I hand her the keys to mine and I slowly lower myself into hers. As soon as I sink down into the leather seat, I can tell something is really off. The car feels like it is leaning, but that could also be because her car is much lighter than mine, so maybe it is just my weight causing it to tilt. I start the car and as soon as I take my foot off the brake, the car begins to roll backwards even though it is set in the drive position. I try to put on the brake, but it doesn't work. The car continues to pick up speed, going faster and faster until it reaches top speed going backwards down the tunnel. I have to turn around, facing behind me to see where the car is going so that I don't run into one of the pillars. However, this is much harder than it seems, as the steering wheel won't do anything I tell it to. It's almost like the car is driving itself. The car manages to dodge all the pillars and shoot out of the tunnel without a scratch. It then crashes through the metal chain link fence blocking the tunnel entrance and goes careening down a winding mountainous road. This road is bumpy and full of cracks from years of erosion, rock falls, and simple neglect. As I speed backwards, I try to avoid the potholes and giant boulders that lay in the road, while also trying to avoid crashing into the mountain to my right or careening into the depths of the ocean below on my left. My girlfriend is trying to catch up to me, and when I see her getting close, I can see the look on her face. She is in terror as she watches me navigate this road, just barely avoiding certain death. A loud cracking booms through the mountainside, and I look up through the sunroof to see part of the mountain start to slide down towards the road. My eyes grow wide, and my stomach sinks with terror as this massive part of the mountain is coming down upon me. I only have a few seconds before the mountain slams down, crushing me in this car. This piece of mountain is big enough to completely demolish the road and toss it into the ocean below. I signal to my girlfriend to race ahead and save herself. She hesitates, but knows that I will make it, so she takes off blaring past me. The wind from her acceleration is so strong that it spins the car and I around to face the right direction. This rapid change causes something in the car to snap, but this time, it fixes whatever was wrong with the car and is now in my control. I press hard on the gas and speed ahead, trying to get out from underneath the falling mountainside before it falls on top of me. The roar of the mountainside crashing down is deafening. 
monstrous pieces hit the road, knocking huge chunks out of the road just ahead of me. One piece of debris slams down to the right of the car and causes the road to pop up a bit, which launches the car high into the air, causing the car and I to fly up and over some of the missing pieces of road. The inside of the car grows dark as the mountain is now blocking the light from the moon. As I look up again through the sunroof, I see nothing but darkness closing in on me. Slamming back down to the ground, or what's left of it, the tires grab hold of the pavement for dear life and launches itself forward at a blistering speed. I just barely make it out from under the falling debris as the world behind me seems to explode as the mountain comes crashing down. It destroys the road behind us, sending it splashing down into the ocean below. The impact is so strong that it even cracks the road miles ahead of us. We continue traveling down this road which is lined with palm trees and tall grass until we arrive at a gated neighborhood. The gate to this neighborhood is made of heavy black iron, accented with gold flowers and a shield with a knight sword on it. The stone walls surrounding this place are a bright white with big green bushes and palm trees acting as a natural barrier, even though the walls are much taller than the trees. As we pass through the ornate gate, the houses around us are purely magnificent. They are mansions that must be four stories tall, two football fields wide and deep, with at least five acres or more worth of land to each mansion. The community is huge. People are out walking their dogs, playing with their kids, and having barbecues with their neighbors and friends on their massive balconies. One of the mansions even has a helicopter sitting on top of the roof, and another as a plane parked in its side yard complete with a runway for takeoff. Realizing we are still speeding, we slow down to admire the houses and the gold street that we are driving on when I hear a police siren start up. Looking in the rearview mirror, I see a black and white Lamborghini with police lights fly up behind me. A female voice comes over the speaker and tells us to pull over. I do as the officer says and pull the car over to a complete stop. I am mad at myself for not slowing down as soon as we were clear of danger, but I was too distracted to notice. As we all come to a stop, I see the door to the Lamborghini behind me open in a winged fashion and out steps the most well-dressed cop I have ever seen. Her police outfit shines in the moonlight as it is made out of gold and silver. She approaches my girlfriend's car first peering into her window and talking to her for a short moment before she asks her to step out of the car. Both of them walk over to me and the officer tells me that we were both speeding in a residential neighborhood. She said my girlfriend already told her why we were speeding and she asks me if it's true and without thinking I say yes. The officer just nods with no expression of any kind. She says, Okay. I'm going to give you two a break this time. Rather than charging each of you with a ticket for going 47 and a 25, I'm just going to give you one ticket. She writes on her silver pad and then hands me a pink ticket slip. I quickly glance at it and it says 55 and a 25. My jaw drops to the floor. What's this? I ask her in frustration. This isn't a break. You just increased the speed that I was going. The officer can tell I am annoyed. So she tries to explain it. She says, Well, instead of you having to pay two tickets, this will save you some money by just having to pay one. She clearly doesn't understand why I am mad. I don't care about having to pay two tickets. I care that I now will have an even worse mark on my driving record, or potentially have my license taken away for this level of speeding. So, before I can start to explain myself to the officer what my frustration is, a woman walks up and starts talking with the police officer. These two must be friends, as they are chatting like they grew up together. The lady who lives in this neighborhood is dressed in a very expensive white and gold tennis outfit. Even her dog has a gold collar on it and is wagging his fluffy tail as the officer pets his head. 
Another person comes up from behind and joins in on the conversation as if he's been there the whole time. He is also dressed very well in his James Bond tuxedo. As we stand there watching this conversation unfold in front of us, more and more people begin showing up. I'm a little bewildered by all this and wonder if this is their neighborhood cop. I also notice that our cars are very out of place here. Even though my car is new, it would be considered low class here. However, as the crowd grows, I can see that one of the neighbors is talking to her about our ticket. To my disbelief, I see the cop laugh and begin tearing it up and acting as if it doesn't apply anymore. I am stunned, but before I can process what's going on, I feel people start to bump into me. I look over and my girlfriend has climbed back into my car and is shutting the door so that she doesn't get crushed by the growing number of people. A fellow in front of me grabs the ticket out of my hand, smiles, and tears it up in front of me. I smile back, confused, and before I can ask a question, this tall fellow pushes me back into the car and shuts the door. He and some of his taller friends pick up the car and escort both my girlfriend and I out of their neighborhood. They set us down in our cars next to each other, and as they shut the gate behind us, they wave goodbye to us with an unnerving smile on their faces. We look at one another stunned at what just took place and quickly switch back into our own cars. We take off, not waiting to see if anything else will happen, and head off into the sunrise to find a repair shop for her car. Thank you for listening to tonight's episode. Please leave a comment and check out our social media on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. We would love to hear your thoughts on tonight's episode. I'm your host, Zach Miller, and thanks for listening. Have a good midnight slumber.